here we are. We're nearly there. Chapter number nine. So at the end of chapter eight, uh, Tina said, cheer up, you're such a pessimist. We haven't lost the bet yet and there's still some of that 30 pounds left. I've been thinking about Streaker and I've had an idea. Chapter nine. Actually, it was a good idea. I had known all along that it was Streaker's speed that we had to do something about. The roller skates would have been okay if it hadn't been for the fact that neither the skates nor the dog had any brakes. Tina's idea was to use our bikes, which at least did have brakes, and her skateboard. We can't tie Streaker to your skateboard, I said. That won't exercise her. I'm not going to tie Streaker to the board. I'm going to tie her bowl to the board and fill it up with food. Tina had this big grin all over her freckled face. We tow the skateboard and Streaker gallops along behind. Brilliant, I agreed. As long as we keep away from main roads, we could use the track that runs along the edge of the field. Let's do it. We paid a fleeting visit to my house to collect Streaker, her bowl, some food and my bike and went back to the field. I let Tina take control since this was her idea. Anyhow, I needed both arms to hang on to Streaker, who was tugging at her lead in desperation to get to the dog food. Tina got some string, tied the bowl to her skateboard and filled it with meaty chunks. She fixed some rope between her bike and the skateboard. Wait until I'm a little way ahead and then let her go, she ordered. Tina climbed onto her bike and set off. I waited a few seconds and then unclipped the dog lead. Streaker was off like a starving Exocet missile. I leapt on my bike and set off after them. It worked brilliantly. Tina raced ahead with the skateboard skimming along behind her and Streaker just about keeping pace but not quite able to reach the bowl. She had half a mile of tongue hanging out. I went whizzing after them and round the track we hurtled. Which picture first? That one? Good idea, Tina. Got a pedal fast. It's great, I yelled. Keep going. The track ran parallel to the road for a short distance, with just a thin strip of tussocky grass between them. We were charging along this bit at a fine speed when a police car drew up alongside and kept pace with us. Sergeant Smug wound down his window. Hey, what do you think you're up to? He bellowed as the car's siren burst into a high-pitched wail. Tina almost jumped out of her skin and swerved to one side. The skateboard lurched violently in the same direction. The dog bowl flew off, went sailing through the air, straight through the car window and splatted wrong way up on top of Sergeant Smug's head. <coughs> As if that wasn't bad enough, Streaker went pounding after it. She zoomed through the window and immediately set about eating the dog food even though most of it was still stuck to the sergeant's head. Mm -mm. Unfortunately, he was still trying to drive his car. He did manage to keep going a little further, even though Streaker was bouncing up and down in his lap and taking great slurping licks at his face. Eventually, a thick hedge and a deep ditch stopped any further progress. Clouds of steam belched out from a punctured radiator. The siren gave a last feeble wail of despair and died. Woo! Trouble. Sergeant Smug struggled out, flailing his arms like a hyperactive windmill and a futile bid to keep Streaker at bay. I threw a glance at Tina and noted that she looked just like a f I felt, nerve-numbingly horrified. It was definitely going to be prison this time. The end result of all this was that Tina and I paid yet another visit to the police station, only we had to wait until a second police car came and a breakdown truck too. Sergeant Smug insisted on arresting Streaker and the skateboard and the dog bowl. It's all evidence for the prosecution, he scowled. You've got a meaty chunk stuck behind your ear, Sarge, one of the constables pointed out, winking at me. That made me feel a lot better. Not a lot, of course, but it was as if someone was on my side. Dad had to come and get us again. I thought he'd be furious with me, but in fact he aimed most of his anger straight at Sergeant Smug who stood there drying his hair after having a shower and changing his clothes. Dad pointed out that, one, he was getting fed up with collecting us from the police station, and two, it was not against the law to tow a dog bowl behind a bicycle, and three, it was all Mr Smug's fault anyway. If he hadn't shouted and set off his siren, Tina wouldn't have swerved. Cool. 
go for it, Dad. Oh. My name is Sergeant Smug, not Mister, roared the sergeant. Your dog has just wrecked my car. She tried to eat my head. If you can't keep her under control, I shall order her to be destroyed. You can't do that, snapped Dad. If anyone ought to be put down, it's you. Really, bellowed Sergeant Smug. I'm not the mad one around here. I reckon your dog's got rabies. She's totally crazy, and so is your family. Roller skates, mobile phones, skateboards, dog bowls, you're all loopy. One more episode like this, just one more, and I'll have your dog destroyed before you can say goodbye, Streaker. And you can thank your lucky stars that I don't have the rest of you put down with her. Now, get out of here. Da, da, da. Chapter 10 next.